In this video, I will be showing you how to set up a yield analysis in AWR. For your assignment, what you have to do is take the RCA filter shown in the lab handout here, select some practical resistors and capacitors which have got specific fabrication tolerances in a way which maximizes yield whilst minimizing cost and minimizing waste. The specifications that this filter has to meet are given to you in the assignment details and you will have to use AWR to figure out what yield you get for different fabrication tolerances and determine the best compromise for your design. To avoid making things too easy for you, in this video I will not set up these specifications. I will set up the specifications in the yield analysis for a different type of low-pass filter with different specifications. The filter that we will use in this video will be an LR filter, which is also a low-pass filter, and we want this filter to meet these specifications. Note that these are not the specifications given to you in the assignment details. This is just a similar example to what you have to do for your assignment. First of all, I will just go to Project Options and set the correct units for this project. These will be kilohertz for frequency and millihenries for inductance. Then I will set up a new circuit schematic and call it LR filter. Firstly, let's set up the filter by fetching an inductor and a resistor and assign the correct values to them. 1 millihenry for the inductor and 100 ohm for the resistor. Let's connect them together and insert a ground reference. Now I need to create a stimulus for my filter, which will be provided by a signal generator. The signal generator will comprise of an ideal voltage source, which is called ACVS in AWR, and an internal resistance, which for the signal generators in the lab is 50 ohms. Now let's connect the signal generator to the filter. I will set the magnitude of my input voltage to 4 volts peak to peak. Now, just as we do in the lab, I need to insert probes to measure the input voltage and the output voltage. The input voltage will be measured at the output of the signal generator, which is right here. I will call this probe Vin. The output voltage will be measured at the top of this resistor here. I will call this probe Vout. Now, I need to set up a measurement to see the magnitude of the gain of this circuit in dB. So I'll just go onto graphs, right click, select a new graph. I will call it LR gain. I will then right click on the graph, go to add a new measurement, select non-linear, voltage, V-gain, and then I need to select the input and output components. And I can do so by clicking on the three dots. For the input component, I'll use the V-in probe. For the output component, I will use the V-out probe. The harmonic index must be set to one. I want the magnitude of the gain, which is already selected, and also I want it in dB. So I'll tick this box, then click on add and OK. Since I know that I will be using a logarithmic scale for my graph, I'm going to right click on the graph, select options, and then select log scale for the X axis, then apply and OK. Now I need to select the range of frequencies that I want to use to test my filter. The lab handout tells me that I need to use this range, 1 kHz to 100 kHz, so that's the one that I'm going to use. To set up your test frequencies, go to project options, then to the frequencies tab, select the units to kHz, start at 1, Stop at 100, use a logarithmic sweep, and 20 points per decade. Make sure that replace is selected, and then click on Apply. Then OK. Then simulate. I'm going to make this a little smaller, so it's not in the way as much. You can see that this is also a low-pass filter. However, you can see that the cutoff frequency is very different from the RC circuit. To find the cutoff frequency, I can insert a marker, and then right-click on the marker, go on to Marker Search, Select Find Y Value, Absolute, and Minus 3. Then search left, and search. This tells me that my cutoff frequency, which is the frequency at which the magnitude of the gain drops to minus 3 dB, is approximately 15.9 kHz. So I can close the marker search now, and now I have to think about the practical realization of the filter. If I select real components, I won't always have the same profile for the gain, or the same cutoff frequency. It will very much depend on the tolerance of the components. So first of all, I'm going to go back to the schematic, and for each component I will add tolerances. To do so, double click on the component, for example the inductor, then select yield, add a tolerance as a percentage, for example we can use 10% for this component, tick use statistics, and then OK. Then go to the resistor and do the same, double click, go to yield, add a tolerance of 5% and then 
tick Use Statistics, then click OK. Now the simulator will take into account the tolerance of the components when you carry out a yield analysis. However, if you just simulate, you will see that there is absolutely no change in your graph. Yield analysis is a specific type of simulation which has to be run separately. Now that we set up the tolerances of the components, we have to set up our goals. So what kind of ranges do we want to be within in terms of the specifications of the filter? Those are given in this graph here. So you can see that we want our cutoff frequency to be between 15 and 17 kHz. Those are two separate goals that we have to set up in AWR. And also we want our gain to be below minus 6 dB for frequencies higher than 30 kHz. So let's go and set this up in AWR. You need to go to Yield Goals, right click on Yield Goals, and then Add Yield Goal. Now select New Edit Measurement, and then select exactly the same measurement that you've got set up on your graph. So again, as we did for the graph, we click on the three dots to select the input component, and then we click on the three dots again to select the output component, Everything else is set up correctly, so we can click on OK. So now we've created the measurement which we want to be within specific ranges. And now we have to set up all the goals for that measurement that we want to simultaneously meet. The first goal is to have the gain greater than minus 3 dB for frequencies lower than 15 kHz. This effectively gives you a lower boundary for your cutoff frequency. To set this one up, we are just going to select the measurement greater than goal type. In terms of the range, we want the minimum frequency to be the minimum frequency that we're testing at, but we want to set the maximum frequency to 15 kHz. In terms of the goal, we want this to be minus 3 dB. We don't need to specify dBs here, just put minus 3. The simulator knows what unit is being used for the measurement already, so we don't need to specify it here. So what this goal says is that from the minimum frequency at which you are testing up to 15 kHz, the magnitude of the gain has to be greater than minus 3 dB. So we simply click on OK. And now you can see that this has appeared on the graph. These vertical lines here tell you that the measurement should not be in this area. So having the vertical lines below the line means that the measurement should be above the line, which is what we wanted. Now we can add another goal. We can either create a new goal from scratch, or we can simply right-click on this goal and duplicate it. For our next goal, we want to create an upper boundary for a cutoff frequency. So in this case, we want the measurement to be less than goal. We want to set the stop frequency to the maximum frequency at which we're testing, but we want to set the minimum frequency to 17 kHz. And the goal is still minus 3 dB. So in this case, what we're saying is that we want the gain to be less than minus 3 dB for frequencies higher than 17 kHz. So if we click on OK, you can see that our second goal has been set up correctly. Again, because we've got the vertical lines above the line in this case, the measurement has to be below the line. So you can see that we've created now a range for our cutoff frequency, which is between 15 kHz and 17 kHz. Our next goal tells us that we want the magnitude of the gain to be less than minus 6 dB for frequencies higher than 30 kHz. So let's set that one up. Again, I will just use the duplicate feature. So I right click and select duplicate. And in this case, again, I want the measurement to be less than the goal. I will start at a frequency of 30 kHz up to the maximum frequency. But in this case, I want my gain to be less than minus 6 dB. Click on OK. And now you can see that your next goal has been set up. So now we've got all the goals, we've got the different tolerances set up on the components. What we have to do is go on to simulate and then select yield analysis. And here we can set different parameters, for example, the number of iterations. It's up to you how many iterations you do, it's part of your design process. I will just choose 1000 to make things quick. It's fun to see the yield analysis on the graph as it is performed. So what I'm going to do is simply close the schematic window so I've only got the graph and the yield analysis open, and then I'll go to Window, and I'll choose to tile these vertically. So I can see them side by side, and I can see things happening as the yield analysis is performed. I'm going to delete this marker here before I perform the analysis. And then I simply click on Start, and you can see how the graph changes as we perform the analysis. 
And after 1,000 iterations, we can see that 70% of our filters will meet the specifications, but 30% will have to be thrown away. This should give you enough information to set up the yield analysis for your own work. And the other thing that you can look at if you want more information is the help within AWR. Simply go to Help, then Contents and Index, then select Index, type Yield, and then double-click on Yield Analysis, then on Display. And here you have more information about this type of analysis in AWR.